Um, well, first of all, I just want to welcome everybody and, and thank you for coming. Uh, it's good to see so many faces here. Uh, you know, we're at day four in, in preseason right now, and, um, you know, we haven't really done a lot yet other than a lot of teaching and instruction, but it, it's, it's good to see so many people have, a, have an interest and want to come here. We, we certainly appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I think so far, you know, even though we've only had four practices, there's uh, definitely been a signs of progress in a number of different areas. And, you know, I think you, got, you have to attribute that to the way that our team prepared back in uh, January all the way through the end of April and our, our winter program, our spring practices. And I, I thought we made a lot of strides there. And uh, the work that we did then uh, set the foundation for the work that we're doing right now. Um, as I try to uh, tell our team, uh, you know, the year is divided into different blocks of time, and one block builds upon the other. And what we're doing now builds upon what happened in that winter to spring block, and then again in that summer block. And uh, I was very pleased with the way our, our players uh, reported back to uh, preseason camp. Uh, they're well conditioned, they're strong. Um, you know, we've got very few guys with nagging injuries or things that would hold them out of practice. And if we can maintain that throughout the rest of the preseason period, um, you know, we're going it's, it's going to be a very productive uh, period of time. Um, you know, I, I thought, you know, looking back to yesterday's practice, our first day where we really went against each other offensively and defensively, yesterday I thought we looked extremely sharp throwing the ball. Uh, the quarterbacks, uh, really all the way down the line of quarterbacks, were very accurate. And, you know, we hit a number of explosive plays to our wide receivers and, uh, you know, Tristan Roberts and uh, Lamar Davenport, who made one of the finest catches yesterday that I've, I've, I may have ever seen. Um, you know, Tyler George, Mike McClafferty, our tight ends. Um, and, and on the defensive side, uh, the experience and the depth that we gained last year through playing um, a lot of very, very young people, I think, is, is starting to show. You know, you, you always hear the, I guess it's a cliche that people say, um, you know, the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores. Um, and, and a lot of those guys, those eight guys who saw time last year, uh, really are, are, are a step ahead this year. And that's going to uh, create a defense that has a tremendous amount of depth, uh, certainly more depth in the last uh, two or three years here. Um, and that'll pay dividends on the field. Um, you know, in the area of the special teams, I felt that, uh, you know, both uh, Eric Splain and Ryan Moore are a year ahead of where they entered preseason a year ago. Uh, they're, they're physically more mature, they're stronger. And the addition of uh, freshman kickers and punter, uh, Lucas Santangelo, I think, uh, gives us some added depth and, and talent at that position as well. Um, you know, we're very, working very hard right now to, to make sure that, you know, we're making progress every day. And that's exactly what I talked to our, our team about after today's workout. It, you go into the preseason period and it's extremely important that you make uh, pro progress every day. You can never have a step back. And you don't ever want to get into the mindset that, well, you know, we're four days in, so I'm four days tired and I'm four days sore. You know, you've got to say that I'm four days in, so now I'm four days better, and I can't wait to get five and six and ten days in because then I'll be five and six and ten days better. Uh, and that's the mindset that this team has. Uh, you know, following up on that, I think that this team has a, a, a tremendous leadership in our locker room and on our field. Um, our older guys, our seniors, and it's a fairly big class, have, have really uh, taken control of this team. Um, and that started back in the, in the winter. That started back in January when uh, this team and the, uh, the staff and everybody basically recommitted ourselves to doing what we have to do to be successful on the field. Um, in that recommitment, um, you know, there were some roster changes, you know, some by choice, some not by choice. Um, but the, the result is that we've got a team where everybody's on board, everybody's all in, everybody's got of the same mindset, and everybody's pulling in the same direction. You know, when you accompany that with the, uh, the experience, the increased talent that we have, um, the, the on the field experience that we have, I, I think, you know, that points to a, a very exciting season ahead. And then the other component that I want to address is this incoming class. Uh, this group of freshmen, the new players that we have on the roster this year, I think are very, very talented. I wouldn't be surprised to see any one of a number of them uh, contribute on the field this year. Um, in, in our recruiting, uh, you know, we felt that when we recruited them that they had the ability to come to Monmouth and recruit, or I'm sorry, and contribute. And, you know, I, I think that you could possibly foresee them uh, contributing fairly early on. 
and, and I know somebody's going to ask me, well, in what position specifically or what player specifically. So I'm going to say across the board. I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they would do that. Um, any, uh, just let me t talk, I guess, a few minutes about the upcoming season here and you know, you know, tell you what, what our mindset and, and what we're looking for. Um, you know, I feel that, that we're in as great a position now that we've been, probably that we've been in since the 2006 season. Um, I like the, the, the attitude of our team. I like the leadership of our team. I like the physical talent level of our team. And I like the way that they've, they've prepared uh, throughout the winter and throughout the summer. Um, and, you know, we're excited about the season. Again, we have a, I think, a, a challenging but exciting uh, non-conference schedule. We've got, uh, you know, a, a playoff team in uh, Lehigh that went deep into the playoffs this year that returns a great deal of talent. We have Cornell, who's really picked to make a move this year in the Ivy League. They're picked third, but you know they've got an outstanding quarterback that they, everybody's saying is going to go very high in next year's draft. Uh, we've got the University of Rhode Island from the CAA, and you know then you've got the NEC, uh, which, as everybody in this room knows, is, is extremely strong week in and week out. Um, I'll open it up to questions. Yes, Ed. Coach, 20 years is a long time to, to do this as a profession. How do you think you have changed from day one to now? And will you go into this season with a little bit different philosophy? Um, I, I hope I've gotten smarter in, in 20 years. Um, you know, I, I hope I've uh, you know, gotten better at reading our players. Um, you know, everybody knows that, you know, the players and, and youth in general has changed quite a bit, you know, since 20 years ago. But I think there's some things that remain constant. Um, although they won't admit it every time you talk to them, they love structure. They love a rigid, regimented environment. They love to be told when to do things and when not to do things. And, and I think, you know, you, you go through a, a period as a coach where you say, well, oh yeah, guys are changing, so we have to change. And the bottom line is we don't have to change. You have to go back to the way you were and, and, and become rigid and, um, you know, and I don't want to necessarily say set in your ways, but, you know, create a, a, a concrete structure in which they can work. Um, uh, I, I don't know if, I don't think I've gotten softer, Ed. I mean, you can talk to the players about that, but I, I'm certainly, I think, um, more in tune to what's going on in their lives. Um, so, you know, you can't help being tuned to some of it with all the social media and all that. You know, everything that's going on these days, um, good or bad. Uh, but I, I'm probably more in tune to the things that they're going into now. And, and, you know, hopefully that, you know, I've learned from mistakes that I've made throughout the last 20 years um, and, 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 and taken some of the good things that we've done. So, you know, constantly reevaluating, moving from one year to the next, uh, you know, the hope is that you're going to be 20 years better. I mean, it, it, I, I liken that to, you know, players on our team. Hopefully after the 20th practice, they're better than they are at the first practice. So hopefully after 20 years, I'm better than I was after the first year. Yeah, Jeremy. Um, you hinted on the conference call that you think um, you may have figured out or I'm going to figure out some changes to help the home uh, situation and uh, trying to play better at the tr and trying to play better here. Uh, would you like to uh, disclose what changes you've made? This no, season? no, I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, the thing is, I mean, you know, obviously everybody's going to talk about, well, hey, you didn't win any home games last year. You know, we're we're very, very, very much aware of that. Um, and obviously that's not a good thing, and that's obviously something that we've taken some steps to address and, and improve upon. Um, you know, it's not always a, a fact of not playing better at home. Sometimes we played very good teams at home, um, and we played pretty well but didn't win the game. But that being said, we still have to win those games, and uh, I thought we did a terrific job on the road last year, and we just got to translate what we're doing on the road to what we're, translate to what we're doing at home. How does uh, Kyle look, and how is he first set? Um, Kyle's looking very good, Steve. He um, physically, he's he's 100%. He's 100% full go. Um, he really was in the spring, even though we did uh, protect him in live scrimmage situations, and, and that was precautionary. And we did that not only with Kyle, but we did that with you know other players who were uh, in similar situations in terms of com coming off surgeries and stuff. But um, as I said earlier, he looked extremely sharp yesterday. Um, 
you know, um, he was, was right on with everything he did. May not have been quite as sharp today, just, you know, we call him what a, you know, witnessed out there on the field. But um, I think he's back to where he was and maybe even beyond where he was at the beginning of last year. Tony. Tony, man. Play this year, you brought in a big kid from the DC area. As a freshman, you talked about your freshman. Talking about quarterback? Yes. Okay. And just talk about him. I don't know if you, you know, like, there's a lot of guys ahead of him on depth chart, but still, why you recruited him and how you feel about him? Well, um, yeah, Ben Onet, um, uh, actually, we were involved in, um, you know, two or three quarterbacks in the recruitment process. Um, and we felt all of them were, were guys that we would love to have and guys that could make us better. And, and Ben is certainly one of those guys. Initially, he had committed to Temple um, in April of his junior year in high school. Um, and it looked like he was going to go there. But as the recruiting process goes, sometimes um, that kind of uh, fell apart as it got into, really, as it got into between Christmas and New Year's last year. And when some of the other guys we were involved with, it looked like we weren't going to get. We got involved with Ben. Um, he, he's, he's very mobile. He's got a strong arm. He's got a great frame. He's got great field awareness. He's, a, he's got a high football IQ. Uh, he can throw the ball extremely well. And he may be our most athletic quarterback. He's very fast. Um, you know, he has, it's a good package, a good combination of, all of, of many of the things that we look for in a quarterback. Um, so we're excited to see what he can do. You know, and that's not taking away anything from our other quarterbacks, but specifically that's what we saw in terms of his skill set. You mentioned about your receivers. Uh, Neil came off the field uh, the other day. How is he? How important is he to, to the season? Well, he, yeah, he's important. I mean, he, he was the, uh, um, you know, conference's uh, offensive rookie of the year. Uh, he was our leading receiver from a year ago. Um, he, he's, he's a big target, great size, great athlete, can go get the ball, has terrific hands, knows how to use his body. Um, he, he's very important. He, he sprained his ankle, and um, we, we fully expect him to be back. It's nothing that we're overly serious about. There were no uh, uh, pictures taken, x-rays, MRIs, none of that. It's, it's a sprained ankle, and, and he's going to be fine. Coach, the yeah. decision to move Mitchell Pollard to defense, uh, is that a case of you feel you're, you have enough depth at receiver or you didn't have enough depth at defensive back or is it a combination of both? It, it's a combination of both. I mean, when we uh, looked at our roster and looked at our depth chart and uh, kind of had a, took a look at, you know, where we felt our playmakers were and, and, and how they ranked, I mean, um, you, you, we needed to spread those playmakers out and get them in positions where they could help us win on both sides of the ball. Mitchell was a terrific uh, corner in high school, had 10 interceptions in his senior year. Uh, we knew he had the skill set and the ability to do it. Um, I talked with Mitchell at the end of the spring semester, and uh, we agreed that um, that would be a good move for him. Jeremy. How does that affect his special teams twice? Twice. <laughs> Not, it won't expect, uh, affect the special teams at all, Jeremy. As a matter of fact, it might increase what he does on special teams. Um, but, uh, you know, he will still be an active part in everything we do on special teams. He has the ability to return kicks, return punts. He has a really good knack for blocking kicks as well, and we plan to capitalize on that. I'm not sure if uh, you're prepared to answer this now, but do you see him as a starting cornerback or a, a nickel or dime guy? Or I'm still Maybe, possibly, all of those. Um, he's, uh, he, we wouldn't have moved him to the position if we didn't feel that we could capitalize on his abilities and skills. You know, exactly what that means in terms of a depth chart, it's way too soon to tell. Uh, you know, he, he didn't, uh, was not at the position in spring ball. Um, so he's, he's, um, he's, he's learning on the fly right now. And from a college standpoint, he's four practices deep at the position. So far, he seems to be making the transition smoothly. Yes? Do you ever consider uh, some of your weaknesses and strengths and how you uh, look to address them? Um, I think, uh, first of all, it's, I start with the strengths. I always like to start with the positives, all right? I, I think we're strength, you know, on the offensive side, we're strong at quarterback. We've got a three year starter returning at the position who's you know, both physically and mentally mature. He's been in games. He's won a lot of games. Um, he's, he's got great command of our offense. He's a leader of the team, and, it, uh, and our, our team uh, really respects him and looks up to him. So, you know, that, that's, that's a big plus. We have two tight ends that have the ability to be all league players. 
both of them, and Tyler George and Mark, uh, Mike McClafferty. Uh, both very talented, big targets, uh, uh, smooth, good athletes, great hands, know how to use their body, tremendous blockers in the run game. We have an offensive line that I feel is one of the best that we've had. Um, and it, it compares to the, the be very best that we've had. Uh, they've, got all si they've got great size. They're all over 300 pounds. They're athletic. Um, they're strong. And, and they all have experience. They've all played in a lot of games for us. Um, so that goes a long way. And I think when you look at our receiver core, it's a very explosive group with, uh, with Sterling, Roberts, Sumlin, Davenport is the top four. Um, I, I think that's a very talented group, and, and the group right behind them has a, has a lot of talent as well. Uh, and then when you throw in a couple of our incoming freshmen who appear to be uh, on their way to being very good also. So, you know, from that standpoint, I feel that's definitely a positive. You know, in the kicking game, uh, we return both our kicker and punter, who, as I mentioned earlier, are, are, are a year um, are stronger, a year better. Uh, we've added to that group a, a freshman who's all shown the ability to both place kick and punt um, and, and do both of those quite well. Uh, on the defensive side, you know, we've got a lot of guys who played last year. Um, a lot of them uh, from about the fourth game on missed it with injury, uh, but they're back now. And I'm talking about, you know, Billy Louch, Colin Cooper, um, um, uh, Elijah Phillips, uh, Reggie Hildebrand missed a number of games last year. Um, they're all back and healthy, but the guys who played in place of them uh, gained a great deal of experience, so that should make us stronger. Uh, we're still relatively young on that side of the ball. Uh, I guess so. The, I guess I, I didn't mention any weaknesses yet, did I? Um, but, I mean, I, I think there are a couple positions on defense, particularly in the defensive line, where I'm not sure what the depth will be yet. Um, I think we've got the players there, but just how that shakes out remains to be a question. Um, who the top seven or eight are in the secondary um, and how and what order they'll fit themselves into um, is, I guess you would call it a weakness only because it's, well, it's not really a weakness, it's an unknown at this point. Um, but, you know, we've got to get that straightened out relatively quickly here. Um, you know, and I also think you know, we're, we're fairly deep at the running back position. Return Julian Hayes, KB Asante, uh, Pete Nagy, all who saw game time last year. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Tony. Coach, about uh, that we had uh, Ian Simon, the leading pass rusher, you said you know, he's going to be searching now for someone who needs to step up and, and rush the passer. Who are the candidates? And who's, well, who's from what you've seen, people good so far. Um, who could be a side guy? I think that Eric Masick. Uh, a sophomore for us uh, who was picked to the all-conference uh, preseason team. I think he's got a chance of doing that. Um, he's, he's quick. He's athletic. I think Pat O'Hara, who's a tall, long body at the defensive end position, who really played his first year of football for us in a, in a uh, backup role last year, I think could emerge in that position. Uh, and then we've got a couple of young guys who have uh, – they may not have – um, all of the size yet that we're looking for, and I'm talking about freshmen, but have tremendous athleticism in um, uh, Darnell Leslie and uh, Jack Eisenstadt. Coach, you talked about in your opening comments about recommitting yourself, you and your staff. Can you elaborate on what you, exactly you meant by that? Um, yeah, my, you know, in analyzing last season, you know, as, as the season got over and I had a chance to sit back and, and reflect and, and reflect on it and, and, and talk to our, uh, talk among the staff and with our players. Uh, I sit with each player individually at the end of every season and then again at the end of the school year. Uh, but when I met with them at the end of the season, I had a, uh, there was a sense and I'm not, I, it wasn't anything concrete I could, you know, put my hand on. There was a sense that, Everybody didn't have their oar in the water and pulling in the same direction. I, I felt, you know, whether you want to call it, uh, uh, we weren't completely unified or, you know, pe too many people were worried about uh, what their role was or we weren't uh, all on the same page of have, being one team with one goal. Um, that was the sense I got. So our, our efforts in the off season were really to bring everyone together um, on a daily basis um, and, and, and really spell out what we were going to do and how we were going to do it. And, and in doing that, 
some people felt that they didn't want to make that level of commitment and you know they, they chose to go do other things or go other places but the result was that the guys that were left uh, were 100 percent on board and, and ready to go uh, we did an exercise in february where we we brought in the uh, uh, former commander of the uh, navy seals a guy who ran the navy seals training school for five years he led the navy seals in operation desert storm um, Admiral Ray Smith, a tremendous gentleman, he came in and spent three days with us here. Um, and he, he worked with our guys on, uh, in group activities, but also in individual and, and, and small unit activities. And, you know, that doesn't mean, it, you know, they were, they were diving into the water and all things like that, you know, with their hands tied. But there, there's a lot of the, that leadership training, controlling your um, e emotion, um, you know, uh, team teamwork, team attitude type stuff that he brought to the table that I thought was extremely beneficial for our guys. And uh, um, that was just one of a, a number of things that we did, Kev, but I, I think that really helped. As a matter of fact, our guys are still talking about that. It was, it was a pretty unique experience you know, with a gentleman who, you know, he's been in the front line. He, he directed 275 missions in Operation Desert Storm and didn't suffer one casualty. Uh, so he was, he was, he's a guy who's on top of his game. He put our kids, our guys through some physical training and at 68 years old, he did every single exercise with them and in a lot of cases better than they did. But it, it was a great thing. Can yes. Can him up? <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> yes. You talked about the talented receiver running back and tight end. What are some of the challenges you will face as a coach um, of keeping the offense in balance and everyone committed? Well, we, whenever you have that many uh, talented players on one side of the ball, uh, the challenge is having enough footballs to go around. Um, only one guy can run it on a play, and only one guy can catch it on a play. And, but I, I think the, the attitude of the guys there that we have in those positions one that is one that they're um, primarily concerned with the team's success and the success of the offense. Um, I think we're going to be able to spread the field, and we're going to be able to present opposing defenses with choices. Uh, on how they're going to try to take certain players away and who they're going to try to take away in terms of our guys. Um, and when they do that, we're going to have alternatives to go through. We won't be one-dimensional. You know, we'll certainly be two-dimensional, and we'll have a great deal of balance in what we can do. Jeremy. Any thoughts on Albany leaving? Um, yeah. Um, you know, certainly it's um, – you know, I think, you know, Albany has, since they've been in the league, has been a, 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 a great opponent, a great conference member. Uh, they're an excellent football team, excellent football program. Uh, they're well coached. They play hard. Um, and they're a challenge whenever you play them. Um, you know, they've had their share of, of, you know, success in the league. They shared the conference championship last year. Um, they went, they represented the conference in the playoffs and um, did very well, I might add, against Stony Brook. Um, you know, you, you hate to see them go, but I, I will say this, that I, I thought that, you know, to their credit, um, they were very strategic in, in positioning themselves for this move, you know, and by that I mean they kept themselves at the maximum allowable limit of scholarships in the NEC. Uh, they, they've, you know, enhanced their staffing tremendously over the last three years, so they were gearing up for something, you know, some, they were looking over the horizon, that you could tell that. Um, you know, and they, they built a, or they're building a brand new facility, which will be probably opened up in a month or two. You know, so they had all their things in place to make a move when and if an opportunity to move came, to move came to, when it came, um, and it came, and I think they took advantage of it. So you know, you got to give them credit for that. I'm sorry that we're losing losing such a quality member of the NEC, uh, but I think you know we'll be able to go out and find a adequate replacement for them. Tony. With Albany gone, there are strong rumors now that you are on May 9th. It's, we were talking to Mr. Jeremy yesterday. Would you consider the CAA has asked them to consider and so forth? So you may have one or two more non conference openings. Yeah. Do you, how do you feel about if, if there's nothing to say to say you would have two non conference games? Right. Now you have at least three, and how do you feel about maybe having three or more non conference well, I mean, I, I think, you know, to address your first point, I think, um, you know, the rumor that Rhode Island may opt to go back or stay within the CAA is, is probably a lot stronger than rumor. I think that's going to happen. Um, 
uh, and, and as you mentioned, that will result in more uh, opportunities for non-league games, and, and that's how I look at it as an opportunity. You know, quite honestly, when the NEC expanded, I'll, I thought it was good for the competitive level in the conference. Um, I was a little bit concerned with only playing two non-conference games. I think that it enhances the reputation and enhances the the value of the conference the more we can play intersectional games with teams from other parts of the country. Uh, when you only had two opportunities to do that, we were limited in that regard. Now if we have three opportunities, or in some years when you can play 12 games, four opportunities, I think that adds to what we'll all be able to do.